Okay, I have a couple things I must do today. Uh, one of them is starting this knife. A little different design. Clients, the client refer, prefers this design. Um, I did change it up a little bit from the original for my liking, but I'm going to start on this today. Uh, this gets to be, this, this gets you out of the realm of stock removal unless you buy, you know, two inch or wider stock. But anyway, I'm going to figure out how I want to forge this out. I want to keep this as, as labor, as, not as much labor as, as would take to do all of this because I'm trying to keep this at a very reasonable price point for the client. Uh, so, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll, I'll walk you through my, my plans for that whenever it gets time to it. Uh, the other thing is, is I really don't like the design of this low layer Damascus uh, knife I was done. Uh, it's not square here, so I already have to fix some things. This knife's already been heat treated and tempered, and and um, I'm probably going to reset that whole process and cross my fingers on it. I've got some lines here. I want to reprofile this thing. I could probably get away with the reprofiling, but I'm also changing my bevel grind quite a bit. There's a lot of material here, so there's no worry about changing it now, but um, I'm going to change that bevel grind, and with doing that much grinding, I think I'm just going to go through, and once I get the profile set and the new bevel lines set up on here, uh, I'll go ahead and re thermal cycle several times and then redo the temper on this this knife. So make this one a little bit more appealing and then we'll get started on this one today. All right, let's see how today goes. Just take a moment, draw out the plan. Uh, this is a piece of 5160, one and a half inch uh, by quarter inch so we'll just go through lay this out on here uh, I'm doing this uh, I know it seems like I'm doing a stock removal plan here but I'm doing this so I can hopefully get an, uh, a good idea as to how where I need to make my hot cut to draw out that extra guard that's there. I've seen knives like this in the past. I've never made one but I'm drawing this out so that I can get the best plan for where this line is what I'm gonna do what I think I'm gonna do just so we're all clear is I'm gonna pull off enough material this is why I wanted this here I'm gonna cut this on the bandsaw I'm gonna make this cut here on the bandsaw and then I'm gonna get I'm going to heat this up and then I'm going to hot cut right through here. And I'll mark that out with things that I can see in the forge. But I'll do a hot cut right through here and then draw this whole piece from here to here out and give me plenty of material to work with in that regard. Um, again, I'm not, not doing a ton of forging on this. There's a whole lot of ways to do it, but I'm trying to keep it simple enough to keep the price point down. So let me run over the bandsaw, get that cut, this this cut in, and then uh, we'll start looking to get it heated up and draw that hot cut and and moved that way so that we have the material there to to finish that off. All right, let's get at it. So here's the plan, just gonna keep this kind of simple. 
use anything as a straight edge. Use a scratching awl and see if I can't make enough of a mark through there that I can see whenever I am I've got this thing heated up. This method does not appear as if it's going to work. I can't get a deep enough scratch in there to see it when it's not blazing hot. That, that might be good. Uh, there's probably better techniques on doing this. Um, I'm using stuff that I have. And to be honest, I'm trying to learn. So... What we'll do is, mm. well, let me try something else. All right, took me a while to find this. Forgot where I had this, but um, I can kind of see these marks whenever it's heated. With this. So I've got the scratch there, and then this mark will also give me a good guide. Jeez, if I didn't just rub it all off. All right, so we'll get the forge fired up. We'll see if I can, I've been able to see this in the past, so I should be able to see it again. If not, I can kind of draw my own conclusions there and uh, see if I can get it. All right, let's get the forge fired up. take it out for this next heat. I'm going to try to thin the material out quite a bit to save yourself some grinding. All right, we're going to let that one, you know, uh, cool. And relax. Get started with the uh, grinding, cleaning up, the reprofiling of this knife, uh, and see where things are going from there. All right, just real quick before we go through that, um, the tool rest on this uh, mini dictator grinder is not something I've been super happy with. You got to put it on, pull it off. It, it becomes a pain in the tail, but. I was watching somebody today who could pull it out and then swing theirs out from this location. So it would then come and swing out. So at least I can loosen it, not have to take it all the way off, but swing it out of my way for whenever I need it. I can have it there. Whenever I don't need it, it's pretty quick to not sit here and do. I can come up with a quick way instead of getting out the wrenches right now i get out the wrenches but um and come up with a quicker way to to do this to where i can just quickly loosen it swing it out of the way in order to do so uh i'm gonna have to round this off the inside there uh, it's not going to impact it i've still got plenty of material here 
to keep things square if that's the case and all that other stuff but uh, we'll just uh, draw this up uh, I'm just gonna freehand guess it I'm gonna try to get as close as I can without taking away too much material but you know I'll just freehand grind some of that off and we'll see how this goes Overshot it just a little bit there, but there's there's still plenty of material again It's just sitting back there most of the time So now, you know now that I have this solution I'm gonna bother with doing it this way that way I, I can Manage this oh, of course I would drop a washer right here while I'm on film Some people know that struggle it, luckily it did not make it all the way underneath the uh, workbench y'all know that's that's normally where they end up so I quit doing it this way mainly so that it was easier to put on pull off and everything else but I think this will be ideal for me see now I can move it out of the way give y'all a better view uh, I can just move that tool rest out of the way Put it back in once I find uh, a quicker means to lock that down. Uh, be perfect. Uh, for now, I'll just get out the wrench, do a quick tighten, and then we can do some profiling. Okay, so before I start the bevels, I uh, went ahead and threw on a brand new 36 grit. Uh, got my uh, bevel guide on. Again, if you don't know, it's just mild steel, half inch, square stock, Home Depot stuff, or Lowe's stuff. I uh, drilled a couple holes, tapped, a, tapped one of them. So, uh, again, not the best thing out there, but anything that gives you a guide is better than nothing. Uh, and so far, um, there's a little bit of wear there, nothing I can even feel with my nail. Just kind of a polished spot and and uh, no other damage elsewise on this. So this is the new bevel line I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it mostly up to the spine. Uh, maybe not. I might stand it off a little bit because I want to do uh, a false edge here. So we'll get into it. Let's get to grinding. All right, I can already tell. Hey, this was a great move for being able to swing this out of the way. Oh, it might actually get out of the way far enough. I just barely touch it when it's this far. I might grind that edge off just so I can swing it on out of the way a little bit further. Uh, but what I do want to note is uh, this grinder had this uh, came all the way out on this side. Uh, it was wider than the platen. Uh, so I, and it was aluminum, uh, I just cut it out. It's the mini dictator grinder. I just cut that piece out. That way I've got free access this side. I still have a hard time because it was always there and I kind of trained myself to do bevels with my right hand and flipping the blade upside down like this. I'm trying to get it more correct. Uh, but as you can see, there's a small window here that I can I can get this knife into and then I have a hard time drawing it so don't judge me too bad on this one uh, hand sanding cleans up a lot whenever you get get into that so um, and you could straighten everything out and get it all flush I wanted to bring this all the way back to this angle here for the drop I uh, decided to just leave it a little bit for now uh, I'll probably fix that after the uh, the the quench the second quench so 
All right, this is out of the way as much as I can get it for now. Uh, I'll just see. You know what? No, I'm not even going to see. I'm tired of settling in life. I'll pull this off, round that off, shove this even further out of the way, and then catch back up to y'all, uh, grinding the other side. I'll stop for just a second. I want y'all to see, uh, I have a 10-inch wheel, and I do a lot of bevel sets on that 10 inch wheel and it puts ever so slightly a uh, hollow grind in even a knife like this so if you can see we're already clearing material here and here and we're not in the middle so a 10 inch I had put a hollow grind a slight hollow grind in there now granted this knife was still pretty thick but uh, I like that hollow grind from time to time if I was doing that out of frame listen I, I will get better guys I apologize uh, this is the lines and this is the wasn't looking at the camera and I'll get better guys I promise uh, you might have seen me focus a little bit more down here because that was still full thickness there uh, I don't have any marking lines because I already had an edge that I want to go to so I'm using the the currently the the previous edge to uh, to grind to so uh, just to round up some things had a hot, Slight hollow grind on here before getting rid of that gonna go with a flat grind All right get back into it I'm happy with the way this has turned out so far uh, they're clean enough uh, to where I can get into the finer grits but uh, a little bit of cleanup I need to do with the plunge grind on just this side so I'll do some focus efforts on that and and I, you know what I was using you know all parts of my hand uh, I never saw any discolorization or discoloring uh, up here. Never saw anything blue. If I see anything, I see a slight bit of straw. I don't know if y'all can pick it up on camera. I see a little bit of straw through here. I don't think I'm going to redo this. I think this knife is perfectly fine uh, at this grit, at this time. With the 36 grit, we did not manage to heat it up enough to to cause an issue so uh, let me do some cleanup on this this plunge line here I'll do that off camera okay guys and any girls that may want to watch this random video uh, this one's pretty much done for the day I don't think I'm gonna work on it anymore uh, I'm trying to take my time and pace myself and do things right so I'm not gonna rush this anymore I did get the false edge ground not perfect but plenty of meat to clean up uh, whenever I said that I may not reheat treat I forgot as to how much work needs to be done here I might be able to get away with diamond burr uh, with what needs to be done in this area but you know that's a do it and see kind of thing so we'll, we'll keep trying uh, but this one is pretty well there this side's a little more wonky than the other but Lots of grinding to still do, so the, it's roughed out. So uh, uh, I think I'm going to put that one aside for the day. Then we're going to turn our focus back towards this knife here. Uh, we've got plenty of material here. Whenever we went back and, you know, expanded that and thinned our metal out, it definitely helps us in this regard. So aside from the work that's already been done forging which wasn't a lot I did have trouble pulling that out that's, that's a bit of material there I, I didn't think I would have that much struggle drawing this side out what I'm going to do from here again uh, I'm trying to keep the cost down on this load if you want to keep cost low easiest way to keep cost low is stock removal run the forge less do less uh, heat works less all that stuff so 
try to run the forge as little as possible what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pretty much stock removal from this point so we forged out this piece uh, bandsaw cut in hot cut this piece here pried that out and then we took and we thinned our quarter inch material down I'm not going to even guess as to what size we're at now but it is a lot of wasted material but uh, you know what I'm not going to do this this way I'm not going to do a full tang on this so I've ordered uh, a real and this is part of keeping costs down and stuff like that I've ordered a really special piece of wood for this uh, I can't wait for y'all to see it when it come in it'll be in, in a while so I want to get this as far as possible before that comes in I've got a really pretty piece of wood the original plan was to throw I might have just pinned on a brass piece here to doll it up a little bit but I want to do a hidden tang with this um, while I sat there and thought about it the issue is how do I transition from here to a hidden tang I've got this short window there uh, let me let me grab a pencil draw up what that would look like and if I can get that in there because I really want to show off that piece of wood so let me do that before we we plan on stock removal it'll still listen I'm still gonna do stock removal on this but this part here may change from a full tang to a hidden tang let me let me let me draw on it and see what it come up with Grab right that. Alright, I think I can make it work, uh, just recessing the little bit of space to transition there, but um, I'm not going to rush into that idea, so I'm going to mark it as is, go ahead and rough shape the handle as is, plan on leaving the full tank for now, because I really want to show off that piece of wood. Uh, again, I'm balancing, keeping this at a reasonable work to price range. Right, so everybody knows the struggle of this. I've I've lost these magnets for a very long time, and I saw them today. So I finally get to use them. I bought them to do this with, and and I lost them almost immediately. So now that I have them back, uh, I'm going to lay these out and and uh, mark this up. And guys, this is probably overkill on the magnets, but any if you've ever drawn on a template. And seen the struggle of whenever the paper moves you're like ah so I just overkill this <laughs> it's it's because I can that's that's what we'll we'll go with this is because I can uh, and I've, I've moved this away I'm not using this straight edge this is uh, hot roll so the edge is already not square it's rounded so whenever I use hot rolled, even in a stock removal method like this is now, um, I do not, I don't leave that hot rolled edge in there. I will go ahead and make it square or square-ish, as square as I can get in my shop. I bet all of y'all enjoy watching me trace around this horribly. I used to be a very good artist. And I have let it go. And it takes forever. I've got all my... Every one of the tips and... Or every tool you can imagine to help me draw knives. And back in my prime, I could probably freehand one better anything I've got all those curve sets I forget what they're called 
uh, I invested in a set of those curves, a French curve set or something like that. Y'all tell me what it really is. Uh, I use all that kind of stuff now because I've lost all ability to freehand and do other things. But, alright. We've got our template. Um, good thing this thing's extra thick right now because looking at how that laid out we are gonna definitely need to be thinner to get rid of all the blemishes but I'm gonna take this over the ooh, what to do uh, I may have heated this to a point to where the bandsaw is not gonna cut it I'll give it a shot listen I'm just cutting out the lines via bandsaw or or via using the belt grinder one of the two next time y'all see it It'll be cut out. Battery's almost done anyway, guys. Alright, catch y'all later.